Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean and today's video is very very special for me. We're going to be making a new light box outro for all of my new videos that'll be coming out. So it really needs to reflect my skill level when it comes to building in Fallout 4. Plus we're going to have the extra challenge that most of this will be built by hand. We're only going to use snapping maybe about 5 or 10 percent and we'll do all of this without the use of mods. Also one final thing before we get started. I will be using this concrete pillar, a rug, and an electrical conduit piping with group select for most of this build. I won't be explaining how I do it, I'll just be showing it in action. Okay, now that I've got the floor in pretty much the way I want it, it's time to add the electrical. And I'm sure most of you by now are aware that I do like to add my electrical wiring in as I'm doing my build. Next, I need a door in the very center of the floor, so I'll use this half a floor, move a concrete block over, snap a door frame onto it, and I have a door frame facing the direction I would like it to be facing then I just go ahead and replace the floor back. Next, let's go ahead and snap these type of walls on. They ho hold a barn door. I've got a pretty good idea for some doors. Now I'd like to build an awning sticking out from the front of this wall. So I'm using these concrete quarter floor pieces with the round ones on the end, or the corner quarter round ones. Now keep in mind as we're going here, later on some of this build does change, but I do still use the same technique to build the new stuff, whatever them changes were. Okay, what my idea is, is to stack these light boxes on top of the awning we just made. But as you can see, the little ones aren't matching up to the top of the big ones. So I need to lift the floor up. I'll use this ladder and concrete pillar We'll lift it up to what I think is about the right height, and then we'll see if they match up. And they do. Now, my plan is to run these small light boxes around this curve and all the way down the front to the other side. So this is how I did it. I actually just had a little light box on the right-hand side, adjusted it with a little bit of a turn, put another one on the right hand side, stacked it up to the top, and then took a quick look to make sure the two tops were not snapped together. And they weren't. So now I'll take out the next row, turn it just a little, pull it back just a hair, and then you're ready to go ahead and snap the next ones onto it. Snap one on to the right. Uh, you would snap one on the direction you're going. We're going around the right. That's why I snap that second one on at the bottom. All you have to do or know doing this is that you gotta look and make sure that your lights are not snapped to ones that they're beside because of them being so close. And all you do is take a look. Yep, you can see the little V looking good. Now I'll go ahead and adjust this a little, pull it back a hair, and good. One more time. Now I show this one so that you can see what happens if it doesn't snap to the row you just made. As you can see, it snapped to the other one, and there, I just turned it. Now what it looks like finished. Okay, what I did here is the same thing as what we've just done with the little light boxes, but I'm using the bigger ones instead. Plus, we're out here on the road because I want to use group select to take it over to our build. Now, do keep in mind, I am playing a survival character doing this. Normally, you would want to save before you did something like this. But for us to save in survival, we have to sleep. I don't want to sleep every damn hour and, you know, all the headache that goes with that. So I do have to take my chances, and I'm sorry, yep, this is one of the chances it didn't work out. I did have to redo that over again. Now what I'm doing is putting up some pictures on a pre-existing building, and I'm going to use group select to take it over into the street to work with them some more. 
I needed five pictures. So we got it back out into the street. Now I can move around a little more easier and uh, we'll get our pillars set back up ready to group select them again. Now I'll try to get it in the center of the pictures the best I can and that should be good right there. Now I'll group select everything again and we'll take them over and I want to fill up the gap that's left behind from inserting the bigger lights in. And I'll just take a second and align this up, set it in there, yeah, perfect. I like that. Now, let's see if some neon lights will fit in there. That's what I have planned for this area, and they do. Now, I don't know what it's going to say yet, but the main thing is that they fit. Now, I'll just repeat a process we did earlier in the video with the ladder, uh, the concrete pillar. I'll raise the floor up till I get it level with the top of these lights. Then I'll insert in some more of the concrete quarter floors. And if you haven't guessed by now, that's right, everybody. We're making an old-time movie theater marquee. Okay, now it's time to build the ticket counter. Now, I had a couple of ideas. This is not the one I'm using. But what's important about this clip is how I made the countertops with these mats. What I did was I group selected them with the pillar, lined them up from this outside right hand corner to the inside curve and then placed it down and I continued this all the way around I did use this mat in the build later on but I didn't remake it over I just used what I've already made so that's why we're seeing this clip and once I put enough of them around it makes a pretty nice looking counter and it doesn't look like the top of the concrete this is the way it was actually done. I used two curved concrete walls together. I put the sink on a carpet, used the concrete pillar, group selected the carpet, and then inserted the sink into the wall. By doing this, even though I've group selected the carpet, the sink still is considering it sitting on top of the carpet, and I was able to insert it into the concrete wall with no problem. Also, I was able to bring it over and place it where I would like it with ease. Now I just went ahead and brought the pre-made countertop mats over and just spent a second, lined them up, and placed them in. And that looks good there. Here's the other side. And yes, I'm very happy now with the way that the countertop for the ticket booth has turned out. That looks really good. Okay, now that the counter looks real good, it's time to build the piece that goes above the counter. So what I'm going to do is use these little quarter uh, curved concrete floors. They're metal, but they're in the concrete section. And I'll use these curved walls to lift my floors up one snap point at a time. It's super easy. You just put one up put the other one on, you can lift it up, snap in the next one. This took no time at all. Now that I've got them together, let's go ahead and take them over and insert them into the doorway where we need them to. Now I was having a little bit of a hard time lining them up here, so I opted to go to the back and I'm glad I did. It was much easier to see. And yeah, that looks like it's got a little bit of a gap. Should give me plenty of room to snap the doorway back in and yes goes in with no problem wow that really looks good very happy with that okay I think what we need to do now is put some uh, metal poles in there some of the pikes now what I've done here is put two carpets out and then one of the pikes or poles on top of the one carpet so I can move it around once again I went ahead and brought the concrete pillar over and we're going to group select the first carpet. Now I'm just moving it around to show you can really kind of place it pretty much anywhere. But what I'm going to do is group select this, sink it in the ground, then go put it in there. And with it being on the carpet, it should allow me to place it inside of those curved floors that we just put up without giving me any problems. And yeah, it does. Plus, it doesn't stick up out of the ceiling all that far. 
and we'll put the last one in okay yeah looks good uh, I left the two front ones sticking out a little bit I thought it added a little extra character now here what I've done is I've made another replica of what our awning looks like but it's not as wide it's two concrete walls shorter than the width of our actual awning I have some cycling lights on there that I've already pre-placed have them all lined up it it just basically uh, mimics what the bottom of our ceiling looks like I'm gonna bring it over I'm gonna spend a few seconds line it up go ahead place it in now I do wish that I would have not had so much bulb sticking out but overall that looks pretty good I'm not gonna tear it apart to do it over again that should give me the look that I'm trying to go for okay let's take a quick look at one of the animations I'm gonna be using and how I wired it now if you'd like more information on how I program these poles what poles I use the timings whatever check out my fifth video in my electrical tips and tricks series it explains how I did this entire build in great detail all the wiring and timing formulas but anyways we've got a few delayed on switches we've got some interval switches they're connected to the light boxes let's see what our animation is going to look like okay it's one black box that goes continuously clear across the entire light box chain perfect okay now that we know it's going to take five switches to run our animation I've got to be able to run five lines of power out to where our animation is and I'm going to use these conduit pipes to do it what I'm doing here is I'm just offsetting these a little bit so that way I can place them in very close together I don't want electrical running all over the place I've got a lot to do back here and I need to keep this confined so we'll go ahead and bring the appropriate pieces up snap them in I already had a little bit of one side built so I'll add in the piece to connect that now all we have to do is add in the next corner piece and there it is and we'll just continue on building from there all we have to do is just take out the one spacer piece move our full length pieces over until everything's filled up once we got it all filled up this is pretty much what it looks like now I just need to hook it to the switches in the house now let's take a quick look at it after I got it all wired up basically what it is is every five light boxes are connected to those conduits and then it repeats over again over the next five boxes and I went with three different junctions of conduits so that way I didn't have like hundred and eighty light boxes connected to just five conduits this way I've got it spread out to about forty light boxes per conduit okay now what I want to do is fill in the gap behind the lettering I've got two walls already snapped up with a quarter wall distance or quarter floor distance in between them and I'm just gonna go ahead and insert a third wall in there so it's one continuous wall now I need to lift it up because we're gonna do something a little special here so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is get into the lettering category and get out a single digit this zero should work fine I'm gonna just kinda guess where it needs to be on this wall what my plan is is to get it to line up behind one of the letters in the phrase that you see in the distance nasty bones and we'll repeat the process on the other side then we'll go grab a cycling light and place it on there now it doesn't snap but you can get it to turn green and once you do you can just go ahead and place it there okay yeah that looks good that'll work excellent what I'm trying to do is create a back lighting behind the word nasty bones which is up on the marquee now here's a quick look at me using the wire glitch to wire the lighting up to the marquee uh, once I've put a wire on the light bulb itself I'll highlight the wire put the cursor on the light bulb press Y 
move it anywhere I'd like to on the marquee. I think it needs to go on the Y on the right side. This was the only way I was able to connect the wiring to the marquee uh, is by using that particular wire glitch. Now we'll grab the entire thing and bring it over and I'll line it up and at this point we'll make sure the light bulbs are where they need to be and everything's fine. Once I've got it where I'd like it and I'm satisfied with everything, we'll go ahead and put it back in, place it down, and I think that is going to work out excellent. Yes, that looks better than I had hoped. Well, let's hook it up to power and see what we got going here. Oh, yeah, that is looking excellent. You know, even though this is the end of this video, I still got a lot more planned for this build. So I hope you guys join me on the next video where we pick it up from here and then complete the build. And then we'll have our final outro. Also, we got to take a second and say goodbye to the old outro. Goodbye, old outro. Goodbye. You have served me well. Probably the last 85 or 90 videos has had this at the end. Now, I can't show the finished build in its entirety, but here's a little teaser of how it turned out. So I hope to see you guys on the next video. All right, everybody, just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.